Hello. Last time we created a message box for all of the many messages about loot that we're picking up and whatever else we need message boxes for. Today we're going to go ahead and create an inventory box. Uh, and, well, it's going to be basically the same thing, but we need to discuss what sort of inventory we would like. The first option is we can have a grid inventory. And that's popular with games like Minecraft, where everything takes up one inventory item slot. It's also popular in games like Deus Ex, where things take up different amounts of inventory space. But those kinds of uh, inventory maps are best for games where your inventory is limited, and trying to carry everything you need around is a big part of the puzzle. Uh, that's not ours. We're, we're not going to have uh, much in the way of limits on our inventory space. Or if we do, they're going to be not those kinds of limits. Um, so we have the other option, which is a vertical list. Now, most console games use a vertical list in columns. So they'll have two or three columns. And that's because if you're in a console game, the limit on your speed uh, is how fast you can move your cursor. So uh, making it so it takes fewer motions of your cursor, you know, pressing left and right on the D-pad, um, if it's all just one column, you have to press down 85 times. But if it's two columns, you only need to press down 44 times, and you can press right once. Uh, so that's a big savings. But in a computer game where the mouse is the primary interface, that's not a big deal, um, because the limit is not how fast the cursor moves. You're moving it with the mouse. The limit is how fast your eyes move. Because of that, uh, a single column inventory is actually better for a mouse-based game, because the human eye can scan up and down much faster than it can scan left, right, up, down, left, right, up, down, left, right, up, down. So we're going to be creating an inventory that is just one column, very similar to our text box, uh, our message box, and we'll use the other half of the screen for our um, display of what the object is. So when you mouse over it, you'll have a pop-up. But the first thing we need to do is create the inventory and uh, allow the player to use it. Now, when we create inventories, we have two basic options. One is that we can put the world on hold, pause the world, and then allow you to do your inventory work in a nice paused environment. I'm not going to be doing that. Instead, I'm going to be displaying the inventory on top of the world, and while you're in the inventory, you're generally going to want to be in a safe place. I'm going to make the inventory probably close automatically if you get hurt, but that'll be later. So we're going to create in our canvas, uh, we're actually just going to duplicate our message box, but we're going to delete the message box script from it and we're going to turn the image back on and we're going to go ahead and put it somewhere let's call it inventory we're going to go ahead and put it somewhere um, oh gotta have our thing selected somewhere like on the left side of the screen is fine um, you know what why don't we go ahead and pin it to the middle and then just put it left of middle that I think is probably the best option and we'll go ahead and extend it like this and now because this still has the uh, the vertical layout group, uh, if we were to drop messages in there, we would quickly see that uh, they work fine. And those are going to be our placeholders for inventory items at the moment. Um, obviously there will be buttons, but we don't have those ready yet. What we do need to think about is how we're actually going to access them, because right now our mouse moves the camera. So we're going to need to unlock this the, the cursor while the inventory is on the screen. And how are we going to do that? Well, right now, what locks the cursor is our avatar controller script. So here we have uh, the... No, that's the messages. There we are. Here we have an update. Screen.lock cursor equals true. And that's basically the, um, the key, the cue that we're using in order to make this work. Uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to set that up as a static variable. And then down here, rather than setting it to true, we're going to set it to lock cursor. Easy enough. Uh, now we won't notice any change right now, but we're going to go ahead and create an inventory object. Like so. And then we're going to drop it onto our inventory class, and let's open it up. 
And what we're going to do is in start, we're going to say uh, avatar controller dot, and then here we're just going to pick out that lock cursor and set it to false. And then we're going to say void on destroy, set it to true. Now this is not the best way to do it in terms of being able to layer uh, multiple um, menus, but that's okay, we'll live with it. Uh, and what this means is that as long as it exists, uh, the cursor will not be locked. And if we hit play, you can see that the camera is still being controlled, but the cursor is also over here. And that means that uh, since the camera is being controlled, our mouse look scripts are actually uh, still active even when our mouse is not locked. The mouse look scripts are of course also on the hero. There's one here and there's also one on the camera. Um, there it is. No, no there's not. There it is, it's on the game object. Uh, we'll call this, rename this a vertical axis so we know what we're talking about. Uh, so these two mouse look scripts are both inherited, they're just the same script that comes with Unity. And uh, it's this kind of uh, uh, very simple script, and you can go ahead and look into it yourself. It's very easy to make on your own. It's also very easy to update. So we're going to go ahead and here and update. We're going to say if avatar controller dot, and it looks like that did not take. It is in C sharp. Well, we'll go ahead and just put it in manually. Um, lock. What is it called? Lock cursor, of course. And we'll just say that uh, if we're not locking the cursor, return. And of course, you can also just say if not. You don't have to say equals equals false if you don't want to. And that should, assuming that we don't have any namespace problems. So it, we do have a namespace problem. Um, hmm. I really did not think we were going to have a namespace problem. It's hard to believe. Um, that's obnoxious. That means that we've got to do it the other way around. So instead of doing it in mouse lick, we have to do it over here in avatar controller. And we're going to have the two mouse lick scripts specified. And then over here in lock cursor, um, we have a couple of options as to what we want to do. And I think the easiest thing to do is to make one of these a lowercase or an underscore, and then make this one get return lock cursor. Are we allowed to do these on? I think we are. Uh, I'm almost sure that we are allowed to use getters and setters on statics. Yeah, we are. Good. So we just need to specify the set, which would be lock cursor equals value. And that's exactly the same as before, right? But what we can do here is when we set it, we can also change our um, mouse look 1 and mouse look 0 to turn them to that value. In order to do that, we are going to need to keep track of our avatar controller. So public static avatar controller active avatar. And then here in awake, we say active avatar equals this and that will allow us in this static we have this static system running so we can say uh, avatar uh, active avatar dot mouse look zero dot enabled equals value and similarly mouse look one dot enabled equals value but we do need to actually put those mouse looks into our queue here so we'll drag the first one in and then we will drag the second one in there we go, save that, press play. And you can see that uh, it no longer does anything, but we have this issue now where we have the animations based on the mouse action. Uh, there's no way to turn off the mouse X axis, so we actually still have to do the work. We have to go and make it so that wherever we say mouse X, we don't do this calculation if we are not currently active. And the easiest way to do that is here in move update, or actually up here in update, we actually say uh, if not lock cursor, or rather if lock cursor, then do these. So we can't move or attack while our cursor is locked. And that of course is ideal from our perspective. So now when we hit play, 
you can see that it's just fine. We can access the inventory without any issues. Uh, so another thing we want to be able to do is to disable the inventory. So we'll go back into the inventory and now you can go ahead and do whatever you'd like here um, in terms of having a button or an axis you push. Up here in update we're going to be checking for a input dot uh, get button down but what get button are we going to get? Uh, we don't really have one. Let's call it um, menu close. And then if it's true, we're just going to destroy the game object. But uh, this menu close button doesn't exist as we are going to see as soon as we hit play. In fact, this uh, long ass delay is because it doesn't exist. See? No menu button. So we're going to go into our input settings. And we're going to add a menu close action. Now the reason that we're adding it rather than just testing for say tab is because we want to allow the user to change this in the set settings menu. So we're going to call this menu close and uh, we can have our positive button be tab. How about that? Um, we can also just call this menu toggle. I think that's probably a better name. Menu toggle is the best name. Uh, and then I guess there's no need to apply it, it just gets automatically applied. Okay. So uh, we'll go in here, we'll say menu toggle. Destroy game object. Pretty straightforward. Now if we hit play, and then we hit tab, we get our control back, and everything works. And unfortunately, hitting tab again doesn't do anything. So how can we get this to spawn into existence when we hit tab? We have two options. The first is that we can have it so that it's already in the scene and just disabled. And the other option is that we can have it so that it gets spawned in whenever we hit tab. Um, there are ups and downs to both. And in this case, I think it's easier if it's just always in the scene and we hide it while it's not active. We can always change it to the other method later. But what that means is that we want to make sure that this inventory item gets called even if all of the visuals have been disabled so we need to actually have a protected bool, uh, visuals disabled equals true and then here in update um, actually we need to be a little bit more aggressive than that Getters and setters are a little bit expensive, but for something like this, it really doesn't matter. Now, you might be wondering, well, why did you put that in a getter and setter? It's the same reason we did it before. Uh, we need to make sure that it all vanishes when the visuals are set correctly. So, what do we need to make vanish? Well, we need to make uh, all of the visuals, everything about this, go away. And the easiest way to do that is to not have this inventory be on the inventory item itself. So right now we've got this on the image, you know, canvas renderer, so on and so forth. And I don't believe you can actually disable canvas renderers. So what do we want to do? I said earlier that it might be best to have it on, on another object, but that's... I, I misspoke. That's an old game... Um, old game method. The new system, this new UI, allows us to have a canvas group. And this means that we can just change the canvas group. So over here we are going to say public canvas group visuals. And then in here we're going to say visuals.alpha equals uh, if value visuals.alpha equals one uh, else visuals dot alpha equals zero and now we also want to turn off the other two features which are blocks raycasts and interactable so those we don't have to have inside of the if statement um, so we'll just set them equal to the value visuals dot interactable equals value uh, so I guess this should be enabled just so that it's the same you know Otherwise, we'd have to be like set it to not value of a whole lot, which is kind of stupid. Visuals dot um, blocks raycasts equals value, and of course here we need to reverse these. There we are. 
So what's just happened is we've made it so that the inventory will toggle on and off depending on its value. But uh, we have this avatar controller dot lock cursor thing happening. We actually want that to be in here. And we want this to be not value. So if visuals are enabled, we're not locking the cursor because we need to, we need to be able to move the mouse around. Uh, however, this does not get enabled properly um, when we start up the scene. Because regardless of whether we're starting up the scene or not, um, this will already be set and we won't have it, it won't be changing. So we have to set that here. Uh, visuals enabled equals false. Uh, yep, just turn it off. And then uh, just hit play, see what happens. Alright, I forgot to put the visuals in. Let's go ahead and put the visuals in. Drag and drop. Save, press play. So the visuals are still there. Um, hmm. What did I do wrong? Let's go ahead and add in a value here. Uh, debug.log changing inventory visibility from plus visuals enabled to plus value. And let's see what it has to say for itself. So it says that it changed it from true to false, but as you can see, oh, the alpha is just backwards. Okay, I'm sorry. I am I confused myself with my own switcheroos. Let's try that again, shall we? That's better. And now when I hit tab, Oh, on a tab. Hmm. Hmm. It doesn't appear that the menu toggle is getting hit. Let's see what's going on here. So it is actually getting triggered, it's just not getting properly updated. So it might be that it's. Oh! Um, well, here's this, this is the problem. <laughs> we were deleting it. Uh, visuals enabled equals not, sorry, visuals enabled equals not visuals enabled. Uh, it's like two in the morning. All right, let's try that one more time here. Now, hopefully we have a functional, yay, so yeah. And of course our animation gets stuck but that's okay, we'll live with that for now, we'll change it later. Uh, now we don't have any ability to click on anything, but it's already been 20 minutes to set up that. So that is the core of our menuing system in terms of uh, making it so that we don't have to uh, uh, have a locked mouse all the time. We're going to be using that a lot, and I guess it was important, but it does mean that this episode was a little bit boring. In the next episode, woohoo, we're going to learn some stuff, I'll tell you.